Any questions about this diagram? Try to visualize the data flow by looking at this diagram for a minute and see if you have any questions because you know the, this is not a sequential task so it's a distributed task so you need you need to keep in mind all the components of this diagram many of them are working in parallel to complete the overall task So what we saw here, uh, hello sir, yeah. I have a small doubt. Yeah, uh, sir, the inverter for uh, A to F, say suppose it has uh, too many pairs of term and uh, doc IDs, mm -hmm. and there is one more parser with uh, a G to P. I say you have less uh, term and uh, doc ID pairs. Uh, so if we like, if we have to uh, sort it, so first we need to complete A to F, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, how will the master will uh, handle this case? Say, suppose A to F, there are too many things. Uh, G to P finishes fast and uh, Q to Z also finishes fast. Yeah, so basically the uh, distribution of the compu computation has to be done keeping in mind that each inverter or parser has to be assigned a small enough task. It shouldn't be that you know, one of the tasks is too large for a machine and the other task is too small. So in this diagram, uh, what is shown is a very simplified picture. You just, you're just shown three partitions. So that's why you're getting this kind of a question. But in reality, these uh, uh, partitions will be not three in number, but you know, I don't know, I'm just taking a guess, 3,000, 30,000, something like that. There'll be thousands and tens of thousands of such partitions. So within each particular partition, the amount of uh, computation that will be involved in generating that partition will be small. Will be small. Yes, sir. Otherwise, the Otherwise distribution the is not efficient. not efficient. The distribution of the computation is not efficient. Sir, in continuation to the same question, uh, yeah. that A to F, G to B, uh, the size, uh, more size and the less size, at the same time, the split, how exactly you are fixing the split point because the documents also will be often variable in size. As he was discussing the A to F, G to P in variable in size, mm -hmm. the input document from the corpus also will be of variable in length. So how exactly the splits are decided here? Well, we do know the size of the documents, right? So basically, we have to ensure that each split is of a size that is uh, small enough for the memory of the nodes in the cluster to be able to handle. So we can always generate, we can say that I'm going to take the first gigabyte of you know this entire corpus and assign it to uh, this particular machine. Then I'll take the next key. So I'm assuming here that I know what the memory capabilities of these cluster machines are. Okay, thank you, sir. And it there's no harm in uh, coming up with tasks that are too, you know, that are a bit on the smaller side, because if one of the machines completes the task assigned to it, it can also it it can again it can be uh, you know assigned another task to perform. Right. So rather than overestimating, if we underestimate the capacity of a machine. Uh, it's it's kind of safer so that you know the, the, it it can it can come continue uh, doing something else after it has completed that task. Okay, uh, sir. There's one more small thing that I want to clarify. Uh, yeah. Say suppose uh, before we uh, sort the things in an inverter, uh, is there any pre-sorting happening in uh, in the parser itself? Say A to F, it's properly you know uh, there is an internal sorting that happens there, and in an inverter we could have uh, other sorting things. Uh, okay, so it turns out that you could ask the parser to do some kind of sorting. Um, let me actually come to that question again because I, you know, I I want to give you a uh, give the class a slightly different problem. So instead of distributed indexing, 
suppose we want to do something like a simple uh, word count you know for every word i want to find out how many times the word appears in the corpus so in that case you can think of the parser not only generating what words appear in its split but also doing the counting task itself okay so in addition to parsing it's also doing some extra computation from its own side so i for example it could it could take all the ordered pairs of the form the comma one so what the parser will do for a word count algorithm will be to gen will be to take the split and for every term in the split write down the ordered pair term comma one into this partition and then the inverter will take all the terms in a particular uh, range and then just add up the counts for that term does that make sense so in yes, such sir. cases in such cases you can actually think of making the parser do more than just writing down the comma one you know maybe it could count how many times the appeared in its split and then write down the comma whatever that count c was so it's kind of doing part of the work that the inverter was doing in the procedure that i just described so in a similar way you can you know think of variants of this algorithm where the parser could uh, you know maybe you know do some sorting from its own side well actually if you think about it it doesn't need to what sort of sorting were you thinking about because the doc ids will already be sorted right in the stream of ordered pairs that is generated within each partition because the doc no actually that's not necessary so here's a question for you will the doc ids be sorted necessarily um yes sir it will be sorted i think so uh for the split that the parser is assigned uh maybe yes but suppose the parser is then handed a few more documents by the master and you know the master tells it you know parse these also because some other machine that was handed some uh, you know those documents was not able to complete that task uh, so then the parser is going to get more documents later which could potentially have lower doc ids because you know when the master assigned that those documents to the previous machine you know the master decided that these were the doc ids for the for, for those documents but then that machine was too slow and then those documents got reassigned to this other machine so the doc the, the doc ids here need not be sorted so uh, now can you uh, uh, explain what sort of sorting you were thinking of doing here as yes, said from the a to f uh, since we got like uh, no master assigned twice to a parser so since they are not sorted there if we mm. take that to an inverter it will be a over overhead on the inverter to do the sorting so what i was thinking was like if the parser could uh, sort according to the doc ids then give it to the inverter so that the inverter will take the doc ids from other parsers and sort it once so well, i uh, was like thinking so uh you are basically trying to you know take away some of the work of the inverter and assign it to the parser and there's a trade off there you know if the parser already has enough work to do uh you know why why increase its burden why not let the inverter do the do that task entirely given that you know we have there are so many machines available yeah 